Next question is from Robert, and it's about a spine issue. Let's um, take a look at his question. Hi, my name is Robert. Hey, Robert. I'm from El Paso, Texas. Right on. Been there many times. I'm a web designer. Interesting. I live with my wife and turned 38 this past February. In the past three years, my back has hurt at times after bending over or doing yard work. So Robert has a definite history of some mechanical low back pain. That's typically either from an internal disc disruption, an annular tear, or from a facet joint. And on occasion, it can actually be the sacroiliac joints or some other source outside the spine. We don't know, and uh, we can't tell based on this. Let's see what else he says. It, the back pain, usually gets better after a few days of laying down and not moving very much. Okay, that could be any of those things. This last time, currently, I didn't stop and continued doing things until I ended up in a lot of pain. I had to go to the ER because I could barely walk, and I have pain shooting down my legs when I bend to sit or get up. My butt muscles tightened when I tried to stand. I had an x-ray and was told everything was fine. Fast forward, I don't have much pain anymore. All right, well, let's take a look at what's going on here. So he had mechanical type back pain and then was doing yard work, the thing that normally brings on the pain, and had some really severe pain with sciatica. That's pain shooting down the leg, causing numbness and weakness in the leg. That history is super classic for a herniated disc. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only thing that could cause it. As a matter of fact, there are a variety of things that can cause this kind of pain. And if we look at them one by one, the first would be a herniated disc, as I mentioned before. This is the hard outer part of a disc. And if that outer part tears so that the soft part can herniate through, it can injure a nerve root and cause actual radicular pain, which we know as the sciatica. A more common cause of back pain is actually from the joints of the back, and this is facet arthritis. This is the spinous process, which is the bump you feel in the middle of your back. If we flow down off the lamina into the facet joint, see how it's red and arthritic? Well, arthritis in that part of your body can feel like arthritis in any other part of your body. It can cause pain. But instead of you being aware that the joint is the source of the pain, oftentimes in that case, you get a different problem, and that is um, that is you get pain that starts in the back, radiates into the butt, feels for all the world like it's in your hip, and then shoots uh, out into the outer part of your thigh. So not all pain that goes into your leg, if your outer part of your thigh is in your leg, not all pain that goes into the leg is sciatica. That's, this is actually a different kind of pain. All right, let's also then look at the other kinds as long as we're here. Another thing that can happen is a nerve root can be pinched by a bone spur, and that can cause pain which radiates down the leg. That kind of pain, you really can't distinguish it from a herniated disc. Now, in this question, the collar is a little bit younger, so that favors a herniated disc over a bone spur. In addition, in this particular question, there was that, remember that mechanical back pain that went on for a while? That's pretty typical of an annular tear. Not specific, but definitely suggestive. And uh, speaking of annular tears, that's the fourth kind of back pain. This is the annulus, the hard outer part of a disc. And normally, an, a disc is, has no blood supply and feels no pain. But if you injure a disc, if you get a tear in the disc, like this annular tear right here, then that can certainly cause healing into the disc. And as your body granulation tissue forms and heals the disc, you can actually then go on to get pain. So characteristic of that is not usually the sudden onset like we have in this question, and not usually, um, usually not severe and getting better. It's usually uh, mild and then getting worse. So the pattern of this and the history are all suggestive that what we're dealing with is, in fact, a herniated disc. Okay, well, let's go back and take a look at the rest of the story. Um, Robert goes on to say, Oh, by the way, so he had that x-ray, 
And herniated disc is invisible on an x-ray. So the fact that the x-ray was normal doesn't mean somebody read it wrong. It means that it was normal. It was probably a herniated disc that didn't show up. Now, normally, if this goes on for three weeks despite care at home, you would go in and see a doctor. The doctor, hearing that this was radiating pain, would get an MRI, would get an x-ray, x-ray was normal, then get an MRI. If the MRI showed a herniated disc, the next step would be epidural injection. But let's see actually what happens to Robert. Uh, fast forward, I don't have much pain anymore. Awesome. You know, as I like to point out, 94% of herniated discs get better on their own, don't need any intervention, which was which uh, so far seems to be the case here, so that's good news. Glad to hear it. Um, I'd say it's been about the sixth week currently. My problem is walking on my foot, that it gets very tight if I walk for a while each day. If I don't walk, it will lessen the tightness. I feel like it's the nerves inside the outer three toes on the left side. I also feel like it's the bottom of my foot where those toes are located. When I do exercise, the foot will untighten or massage my area around my butt. My question is, what can I do about it or should I just wait it out? I've shown so much improvement. My leg is stronger now, not much pain, no shooting pain in my legs. I'm assuming that I have a herniated disc and that hopefully my body will absorb it. I think that's a good assumption and the cramping in your foot is probably the, the nerve root disorder is called radiculopathy radiculopathy. So it, the cramping is probably part of the radiculopathy, which is clearly getting better. Now, about 84% will heal within six, within eight weeks, and you're not even eight weeks yet, so you're right on target there. 94% will heal entirely on their own within 12 weeks. So what I would recommend in this case, given no red flags, no muscle weakness persisting, and the re resolution of the pain and the sciatica, I would recommend that you give it another six weeks and if it's better at that time, you're done. If it's not, get an MRI and see what's going on for there. Thanks a lot for submitting the question, and I appreciate it. Um, I hope this helps.